Boston Avenue podcast. I'm Caitlin Drake, Director of Communications at Boston Avenue United Methodist Church. I'll be solo hosting today um, since Philip is going to be a guest. And we'll be talking about our youth summer camp experience called The Great Unknown. So I'll be joined again, Philip Boone, who you know and love, our mid-high youth director, and Alicia Urban, our senior high youth director. Hi, y'all. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having us today. So I said a little bit that it's a summer camp, but what is the great unknown? Because it's clearly unknown to most of our listeners. The great unknown is four days of mission work that is a collaborative effort between the mid-high and senior high. And they stay at the church during the time. It's mostly done locally. You stay in the Tulsa area. And they sleep at the church. And... Um, during that during those four days so they never go home and the best part of that is that they have no idea what they're doing it's unknown to them it's a secret they just they trust us to not lead them astray and it's four days of mission work and having fun and it's this year we had our 15th grade unknown and it um, started back in 2005 with under um, Debbie Peterson and Audra Vogel, who came up with the idea um, the year previous to that about just a mission camp where um, that's a little different than what most people are used to. And it's just a lot of fun. They, they've done it every summer since. And you were involved 15 years ago when The Great Unknown first launched. Have there been any differences over the years? Um. Not totally that I remember. I was the first one. I was was my third year as a VLT, which was the col- as a college intern at Boston Avenue, and I remember it being exciting because I'd never heard of it and had no idea what it would entail. And we went to a lot of fun places. We went to Build a Bear. Um, we went. I remember we went in to one of the we we went swimming to one of the youth's houses and. The great part is that you, you work that out with the parents so they know that everyone's coming, but they didn't tell their child. So the whole time he, he was saying, why are we in my neighborhood? Where are we going? What, th- this, is, this, is, this is my house. Why are we, do my parents know we're coming? And it was <laughs> hilarious because he had no idea we were going swimming. So we, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was probably my favorite thing we did that summer. Alicia, this is your first great unknown, um, but you've had a lot of experience with children and youth missions and summer camps. So, you know, as somebody who's kind of coming from outside and starting here, um, why is this one different or what makes this special? I think what makes it really special is how much mission work they're doing in a short amount of time. And it really lets them experience a wide range of mission with the same group of people and really emphasizes the need for people to help people in Tulsa and seeing different ways that can come about. And I'm not a youth director at all, but it seems like mission work is, is a a valuable thing for a youth program to provide as an experience. Am I, am I right? Alicia and I are lucky in that this youth group, the youth group of Boston Avenue are very mission oriented and they always crave more mission work. They want to know what can they do and they're always interested and they have ideas about where they would like to help. So um, they're very, the church as a whole does a lot of mission work and the youth are also a big part of that. And part of what the great unknown offers is for them to go to mission sites they haven't been to before and then come to Philip and to me and say, we want to come back here again. When can we come back? And it helps us shape our fall programming, which is very mission heavy, with some of the places that they've gone and started building relationships with during this mission camp. Tell me more about some of those mission partnerships or mission relationships that you form. What are some of the kind of scope of the agencies that we've partnered with um, or their kind of focus? And how does that partnership look in the future? One of the activities that Senior High did during the Great Unknown was going to Methodist Manor to help some of the residents there with technology. 
and they would bring their phones, they would bring tablets, and our youth would explain to them how to get their email, how to send a text message, how to take a picture. And they loved it. It was a great relationship. The residents asked when we could come back again. The students asked when we can return. And so it just builds a wonderful partnership. And just to clarify, Methodist Manor is a senior living community Correct. associated with the Oklahoma United Methodist Church. That's so exciting. I love that, that there's that intergenerational connection. That was um, last year, the Mid-High did technological help um, at Methodist Manor as well. And that was one of their favorite places to go to help. And, and it was amazing to see just these sixth through eighth graders helping the senior citizens who are at who are at Methodist Manor, um, and giving them help. Sometimes that we had one one person who um, lives in Methodist Manor, who most of them brought their cell phones and helped help us with all this. Um, but one person brought her phone with a cord that she would pulled out of the wall, and um, or that she had pulled out. And my um, and the student came up to me and said, "I don't know how to help her." <laughs> It's like, honestly, neither do I. But it, it was adorable, you know, because like, she wanted help with her phone. But they love helping um, the people at Methodist Manor, and it's a great partnership. My goal for when we do the Great Unknown is, since they don't know where they're going and it's unknown to them, I try not to do the same mission year to year. A lot, a lot of times for the for the Great Unknown, we do different sites that maybe we've never partnership with before. One that we've done that I believe Alicia did this year with Senior High and we did last year was Restore Hope. Mm -hmm. And that's another great partnership we have. Um, but like this year, I don't know if they've ever done it before, but um, we went to Parent Child Center, which is just down the road from Boston Avenue. Um, and we went to um, Francis Willard, which we have Circle of Care. We have a great relationship with them. So we went there. And so it's also not only building upon relationships we've made in the past, but building new relationships that maybe the church has with them, because I think the church has gone to certain places, but the youth have not. And another goal that we have is for them to look to see where they can help in their community. After the Tulsa floods, we modified our schedule to include cleaning up along the river because there was such a need for that. And the goal is that students will start to see those needs on their own in the community and find ways that they can step in and take action. I will say, with regards to the schedule, one of the really good parts about it being unknown is that the youth don't know what we're doing, so we can change the schedule on the fly, and they have no idea, so they're not complaining about why didn't we do this. Um, it was supposed to rain the first day, maybe the first two days, mm -hmm. and we completely changed our schedule because we had a lot of outside activities. So early morning while they were eating breakfast or stuff, Alicia and I, uh, and they were with the other um, parents that were there, Alicia and I were in her office trying to redo the schedule, figuring out what we can do, and it made it, I feel like it worked flawlessly, um, but the youth had no idea. So, um, so that's one really good part about it being unknown is you can change the schedule and they don't know. So if any youth directors are listening right yes. now, you would heavily endorse this model just just for that reason. Yes, yes absolutely. Definitely. It's sometimes unknown even to us. <laughs> um, so this is so mission oriented and it's also very locally focused. Um, and so much mission focus from churches seems to be uh, in international mission work. Um, so what is the value in doing mission work locally, especially for youth? I think it's really important for youth to do local missions and not to discount national and international mission trips, but there's so much focus put on those that we forget there's such a need in our own backyard and that we don't have to spend thousands of dollars to do mission work. We can go just down the street and help sort school supplies for students who wouldn't have them otherwise or further up the road and organize the food pantry. There's a lot of work that needs to be done here and that it's very rewarding for our students to do here. And by doing this, we're hoping to cultivate 
a lifestyle of mission rather than a vacation of mission. We have another guest on the show that I failed to introduce earlier. Uh, would you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Taylor. <laughs> and Taylor, what grade are you in? Going into ninth. And you participated in the Great Unknown this year, right? Yes. So what were some of your highlights from this year at Great Unknown? What did you do? Well, we did 15 service projects. Sometimes it was two a day, sometimes it was one. And then with every service project, we did a fun activity. What was your favorite mission project that you worked on? Going to Methodist Manor or going to the food bank. What connects with you in Great Unknown? What, what do you like about it? I like how you don't know where you're going, so you're always paying attention and you can see not everyone's on their phones and everything because you're looking around and trying to see where you're going. What about spiritually? Where did you connect with God during this camp process? We went to two different surf church services one day and just seeing how different churches do it but one idea. So pitching over to our youth directors, um, tell us about this um, church service experience added into the missional element, the the spiritual formation components. One thing that we did differently this year was to hold Great Unknown over a weekend, and it allowed us to take the youth off-site on a Sunday morning and experience a different type of worship. Uh, Mid-high went to Vernon AME, senior high went to First Lutheran and House Church, and so they were able to experience uh, the senior high students were able to experience a liturgical service that had some similarities to the Methodist Church and some differences, which we were able to discuss, and then a non-denominational service. And we spent an hour that night talking about what we saw, what we experienced, how we felt, what resonated with us. And for some of the students, it was one of the few times they've been outside of Boston Avenue for worship, and it really opened their eyes to new ways to worship and new ways to experience God that they can then bring here and things that we can incorporate in our senior high worship that we do on Wednesday nights. Yeah, Mid-high went to Vernon Amy, which is another partnership that Boston Avenue has formed um, with doing music with them and just um, partnering with them over the last year or so. And it, just like Alicia said, it was nice to see how another church worships um, because everyone is so used to Boston Avenue's worship service. Many of them sing in the choir, so they're here every week for the first um, service, for the early service, and they're not used to seeing how another church may worship. Um, he and he did announce us during the um, during the um, service and did give me the mic to say everybody's name who was there, 24. 425. We had exactly 21 mid-high youth and 21 senior high youth, which was really interesting. Wasn't expected, wasn't expecting it to be so 50-50. Um, but it was nice for them to see just how how they worshiped. And Vernon Amy's a little bit longer. They're not it's a two-hour service. And so they're not used to as long of a service, as many songs and everything. But it, it was nice to be able to see how another church does it. I'll echo that senior high also received a very warm welcome from both of the churches that we attended. And I think it was really great for the students to experience that and feel the presence of God through the members that were excited to have them there. And Pastor Rob Martin and Pastor Bonnie Lobeck, who went out of their way to make sure that they felt welcome there. And I think then at that point, it models for our youth how, how to welcome people who aren't from Boston Avenue who come in and visit us um, to kind of take a, take a walk in somebody else's shoes as, as coming from the outside. And you both have, have talked about senior high and mid-high doing activities separately. Are there times that they're together as well? Mm -hmm. Yes, we did the mission activities separately, but the fun activities we did together so we went swimming together we did all worship together and we one of the ones we swam and then did worship while they were in the pool which was which they weren't expecting and it was a fun time we like to try to do a fun worship type experience that's not normally what they're used to last year we 
um, when skating for a fun activity and did worship on the, um, at, on the skating rink. So that was a different experience as well. But we went to um, Urban Air and they were all together. We went to, we saw Toy Story 4. Um, which was one of the w- one of the activities that we weren't expecting to do that we had to change at the last second, um, but luckily we were able to get fifty some odd tickets in a movie <laughs> theater. So that <laughs> for for the time we wanted, so it ended up working out perfectly. Um, but yeah, we do all the fun stuff together, and then all the worship. We did two games of sardines, one separately and one together. And if you do not know, sardines is a game where one group hides. And every other group tries to find them. And once you find them, you hide with them. And you do it in complete darkness. So you don't turn the lights on. And um, doing it through Boston Avenue is a l- I, almost any group, youth group I've ever been a part of plays sardines. But Boston Avenue is a lot different than most other churches because other churches aren't quite as big as Boston Avenue. So it's quite the experience. And there's a lot of screaming, and if if you just randomly, but like good screaming, good screaming, right? good screaming, yes. If you randomly showed up, you were wondering what you would wonder what was happening in the church. <laughs> but it's it's a lot of fun, and the youth have a lot of fun. Kicking it back to you, Taylor. What is different about you now that you've completed a great unknown experience? A lot of when people say missions, you think going somewhere exotic, but seeing how there's so many opportunities, just in your neighborhood or right in Tulsa that you can go and help and it will change someone's life. That changed my view. And for all of you, um, was there a particular moment or interaction, um, whether fun or spiritually um, significant, that stands out to you um, from this last great unknown? For me, it came on a Sunday evening when the senior high, instead of playing a game, decided to come together and talk about what we had been experiencing. And it really evolved into how do we take what we're doing this weekend and change our youth group? They've been in a process of transition and want to change some of the things and that helped give them a vision for it. And it sparked a lot of discussion about what do we want? How do we create this? And watching them take the ownership and get excited was such a beautiful moment for me. For me, it was seeing them do their mission work, maybe doing mission activities that they've never done before that was completely new to them, um, and watching them work together to get done what needed to be done. Um, and also, I, I enjoy watching youth worship, just watching them in worship service and singing and worship and being involved. Um, so anytime we worshiped, it was a great experience. Um, we did 13th Street worship, which is our more contemporary worship service, which is on the second and third Sundays of every month, um, if you would like to come. But it's um, they, but the 13th Street worship, uh, worship group came and Sarah P. Montgomery preached um, in the chapel. And at the end, they did this little light of mine and randomly the number of the youth started jumping up and down and started jumping in circles and just having fun with the song and that was that was awesome i liked seeing that as well so anytime we got to worship was a great experience we went to a lot of mission places and just seeing how people who usually aren't together and like hang out just everyone came together and helped each other and helped the people in need so if somebody is listening and thinking Yeah, this great unknown sounds like a a cool idea, a mission-oriented summer camp where we don't tell the kids what we're doing. Uh, What would you say to them? It's my favorite part of the summer, so I would say to go for it. Um, I would say there is a lot of work beforehand, um, but also that comes with even if you did tell them, like whether or not you told them, there'd be a lot of work um, beforehand. It's sometimes hard to keep it a secret the adults that are going do have the schedule so you have to tell them keep it under lock and key don't let any of the youth know but i i I love it i think it's a i think it's a wonderful um wonderful event and i'm glad that i get to be a part of it yeah as you mentioned this is my first year doing it and i've spent my entire career before coming to boston avenue trying to 
help students cultivate a love for missions, but I've never seen it done so beautifully as this carefully crafted experience that gives them so many mission opportunities. And I have not yet been through a full year here, but I do think Great Unknown will probably be at the top of my list of favorite things. I am already looking forward to next year. I will say that this was, while I did the first one, I haven't done that many. I did the first one in 2005. Then Debbie randomly asked, asked me if I could come like in 2011 to help. So I did that one. And then last year was my first one as the as planning it. Because before, when I just came, the schedule was already in place. I just showed up and Debbie gave me the schedule and we went with it. So this is this was my second year um, planning it, and luckily I think each year it'll just be easier <laughs> in in going and planning and getting it done and finished. Even when you we've never seen faces here before, you're just welcomed and you make new bonds with people and you just want to come back. Any final thoughts that you'd like to share? Particular funny stories from Great Unknown this year. I know one of my favorite features of Great Unknown is when on the supply list, you all give them supplies that they're not going to be using um, just to like plant a few red herrings. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think last year they had like a shovel or a hard hat or something. So I just, I find that very entertaining. Yes. Yeah, so sometimes they know kind of what we're going to be doing because that we tell them to bring a swimsuit and we usually go swimming even though in the future we might tell them and not go swimming. We don't know, but um, we've never done that before. So <laughs> so you, sometimes they know, and a lot of times we bring the what we need to um, do the mission work. But I don't really have very many just pure stories to share. It's just an amazing time doing wonderful mission work and having – a lot of fun. We also give them milk and cookies um, before dinner. Or I mean, before bedtime. Before bedtime, not before dinner. Milk and cookies before bedtime. Don't tell their parents. <laughs> oh, they know because we put that on the list for parents to bring. <laughs> so they know. Um, so we give them milk and cookies before bed, and we have just an amazing time. And I think more churches, if they're listening, should incorporate something like the Great Unknown. Yeah, it's always fun to see the students guess where we're going. And as we're pulling out of the parking lot, they start trying to figure out which direction we're going and what's in that direction. Mm -hmm. And they'll yell out guesses. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're right. Mm -hmm. Most of the time they're not. But when (laughs) they are right, they get so excited. Yeah, I had I didn't have any I didn't have anybody in my vehicle guessing this year. Last year they guessed all the time. And one of, the, one of the ones, we went to the skating rink, and they guessed that pretty early. They were like, I know the skating rink's down here. That's where we're going. Um, we went to – we saw um, The Incredibles um, 2. Yeah, The Incredibles th- – 2. 2. Are there only two of those now? There are only okay. Two. <laughs> we, we saw Toy Story 4, Incredibles 2. Um, we saw Incredibles 2. I'm sorry. You're the Disney fan. I know I love Disney. I wasn't thinking. Um, we saw Incredibles 2 last year. Um, it was on, on the third day, and that was actually planned. No, unlike Toy Story 4, that was the plan going into it. Um, but we saw Incredibles 2, and the first time we went when we were going to do something fun, um, the first day, they guess, two people guessed we're going to the movie theater. So then they guessed that every single time. You would know eventually they were correct. And I kept thinking, if you keep guessing that, you will be correct. So they were correct about that one. However, there was an asterisk next to it. Any last thoughts, insights, great unknown plugs? I, I will say if anybody is interested in the, something like the great unknown and wants to know a, a youth group what goes into it, they can reach out to Alicia and myself and we'd be happy to talk about it. Um, it's just our names at bostonavenue.org, Alicia Urban at bostonavenue.org, and Philip Boone at bostonavenue.org with one L. Make sure there's one L in the name Philip. We'd love to talk about it and talk about how we how it happens and what we can and what you can do to have it happen in your church. This has been the Ascends at Boston Avenue podcast. You can find us at 1301 South Boston Avenue in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Or visit us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. And if you're looking for Philip or Alicia's contact information, you can find that on our website. Mm-hmm.